Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I pray that you're having a wonderful day. This is a beautiful day. The passage of scripture comes to my mind that this is the day that the Lord has made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I want to speak to you today before I invite you to join me tonight about something that is near and dear to my heart. Now, right now in society, my friends, we are seeing opinions being squashed. We're seeing things take place where uh, people can just designate something as misinformation or uh, if you come down on the wrong side of a thing or if you disagree with someone, then you're being bullied and being uh, uh, harassed. And uh, uh, we see on college campuses, we see in the malls, we see all of these things taking place. If you uh, don't go along with the popular narrative, then you are pointed out or, or made fun of. If you for instance, if you actually uh, believe that Israel has a right to exist and dare say, I stand with Israel. In many cases now, we're seeing people who are being attacked, uh, being uh, 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 harassed, uh, uh, mobs are showing up and different things like that. And these things serve, They what they do is that they send a uh, very subtle the very, very, well, not so subtle, very plain and loud message to society. A, you, you better uh, agree with me. And if you do not agree with me, then you better say nothing at all. And in many cases, the truth, God's truth, the other side of a thing is being suppressed. And I want to say to the believers out there, I want to say to the preachers out there, do not allow the enemy to frighten you into silence. An interesting passage of scripture that have stayed with me throughout my ministerial career and is one of the first passages, by the way, that I learned when the Lord saved me and, uh, and uh, even before the Lord called me into the ministry or shortly thereafter, I stumbled upon a, upon a, a gem or a jewel, if you will, of a passage of scripture that has been a part of my ministerial career and a part of my thinking ever since God called me. And that passage is found in Jeremiah chapter number one and verse eight. And it says, it says simply this, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, the prophet Jeremiah says, and the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And he said this, see, I have this day set thee over the nations, over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. You know, the word of God has that effect on society and on people. God's truth, yes, it does root out sin. It pulls down every imagination and stronghold that is contrary to God's truth. It destroys the work of the enemy. And then when God finished destroying and throwing down wicked thrones and dominions, then the, wor the word of God begins to build you and the word of God. God plants us. But the, the word, my friends, cannot have this effect unless we are willing to speak up and say what God says, to say it early and to say it often. And I want to encourage every preacher who's watching today, do not be afraid to stand on God's truth. It's one thing to be polite. It's one thing to be a good citizen. It's one thing to be courteous. And Lord, help me. I try as best as I can to be these things. But uh, but on the other hand, you don't want to be a coward. You don't want to be the kind of person who has conviction, but you doesn't have you don't have the courage of your conviction. Listen, conviction without the courage of that conviction is nothing. It's a waste of time. And too many believers have certain convictions, but they've learned that if you incorporate America, 
if you're at school, if you're, if you're, uh, uh, wherever you may be, you just keep those opinions to yourself because you don't want your friends, your family members. You don't want, uh, uh those whom you associate with to look at you and, 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 uh, and, and to ostracize you or to criticize you or any of these things. And I understand that. But we are called to stand for God's truth. We are called to speak up for the Lord. The passage I just read uh, to you is the passage. It's what the Lord said to the prophet Jeremiah when he was calling him to preach. The whole point is I've called you and before I formed thee, I knew thee. He says, before I formed thee in the belly, verse five, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nations. He ordained them to be a prophet. The prophet must speak up. The prophet must prophesy. And God says, I knew you before. Before I formed you in the in in the womb. So now what does that say uh, to the abortion people? I'm not talking about abortion, but God says before I formed you in the in the womb, I knew you. I had an assignment for you and I ordained you. How many people have we killed and aborted that God had ordained to speak to our nation. Well, God says to Jeremiah, hey, God blessed him to be born. I've, ordain, uh, I've uh, ordained you. I want you to speak up. And Jeremiah said, then, uh, then said I, oh my God, Lord God, uh, behold, I cannot speak. I'm a child. That is, I haven't been trained. I'm, I'm not, I'm not old. And, and, and listen, Jeremiah was around 20 when he claimed that he was a child. So he wasn't, wasn't a baby. He was a grown man. He didn't want the assignment. But the Lord said unto me, say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Whatever I tell you, that's what I I want you to say. So I'm saying this, and Brother Gary, I didn't plan on going this way. I just wanted to quote verse 8, but the Holy Spirit of God is speaking to me. There's a preacher out there or preachers. There are leaders out there that I'm speaking to. You've been in a quandary. You've, you've been more concerned about maintaining and protecting your ministry. You've been more concerned about the status quo and earning a living and providing for your family. You've been more concerned about being safe and, and being liked and accepted in the community. Then you've been concerned about saying what God has called you to say. Well, I want you to know, man of God, woman of God, when you fail to say what God has called you to say, one of the things you do, you fail to give God a reason to keep you here, to protect you, to keep you alive. And then you're going to have to give an account of the Lord. See, we're not going to give an account in the day of judgment for the things that we, we, we did. Not just because, see, the, the, there are acts that we commit by not doing certain things. There are sins of omission and sins of commission. And if we fail to say what God have called us to say, then we have sinned. We have committed the sin of commission. And God called the pre preachers dumb dogs, dogs that wouldn't bark, dogs that would make no noise when the enemy was approaching. So I want to encourage every pastor out there. I want to encourage every believer do not be afraid. Do not be intimidated. Don't be af afraid of the bully. Don't be afraid of the mob. And let me tell you just a little insight on me. I don't plan on going anywhere uh, to go into any uh, other house of worship, any other religion any other place, walking on their territory, uh, disrespecting their worship, disrespecting their schedule. Yes, we go and protest at the abortion clinic and we stand and go where we are legally allowed to stand and, and, and go and, and, and be and where, and we protest within the confines of the law. But in terms of going overboard and, and, uh, going into the place or going on the grounds, it, I would never do that because that's not legal. And with the mind not to go any 
place where we shouldn't and disrespect anyone else's right to worship with protest and all that. I feel the same way about making sure you don't disturb mine. When we come here to worship, we come to worship the God of the Bible. We come to give him all the glory and the honor that's due his name. We, we have a certain order that we have established here at the church, and we will not allow that to be violated. We love the Lord. We are a threat to no one. We stand on the Bible. Therefore, among other things, we stand with Israel. How can you be a preacher and not stand with Israel and read what God has said about that nation? And what God says about that land. Now, preacher, do you believe that the Bible has changed? Do you believe that the Abrahamic blessing has run its course? What well, God says, I will bless him that bless thee. I will curse him that curse thee. And he said to Abraham, with the, your descendants and this people I'm going to raise up through thee shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. The last time I checked, God hadn't changed. Genesis chapter number 12, the promises of God are yea and amen. God's promises, the Bible says that, uh, that the Lord uh, will not, that God's gifts and callings are without repentance and the gifts and callings of that text is not talking about playing the guitar, playing the organ or the gift to draw, but it's dealing with God's plans for the nation of Israel, God's original plan and design with using these people to win the rest of us, to cause us to be saved and blessed and to walk into the glory of God. And the Bible says that those gifts and callings are without repentance. You see it there on your screen. Let's turn to it. The Bible says here in Romans chapter number 11 and verse 29. Thank you for displaying it, Gary. It says, for the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. God's grace gifts, God's divine callings, they are irrevocable. And what God, my friends, have determined to do in Israel, what God has determined to do with any people, none can stay his hand, none can stop him, and the Lord is going to bring to pass that which he has intended to do. What a mighty God we serve. And that's one of the reasons I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of the enemy. I'm not afraid of the devil. I'm not afraid of the things that's going on today because I know that the God of the Bible, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is in charge. And my friends, he's coming again. My friends, he knows where we are. He knows what we're facing. He knows what we're going through. And he... Praise God is not inactive. He's not asleep. He hasn't gone off somewhere and fell out, but God is moving by his spirit. Now I have a question for you and I'm headed for it. I'm, 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 I'm tipping. I'm giving a little tip, giving a little tease uh, to tonight's teaching. How do you see God? How you view God, my friends, has everything to do with how you respond to him how you worship him, praise the Lord, how you praise him, how you treat him. I'm telling you, the God of the Bible is wonderful. And, and, and I want to say to you, love him and worship him for he's worth it. And he's coming again and do not be afraid. Now I'm going to stop right here because I'm, I'm, I'm going too far. I'm, I'm going into my message tonight and I don't want to do that, but I want you to join me right here tonight <laughs> at the upper room church of God in Christ for, uh Oh, my pen's messed up. Bible study. <laughs> you ever seen anything like that? Bible study, praise the Lord. I didn't plan that, Brother Gary. I put the pins going to jumping and everything. Maybe the pins are getting excited about the, 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 studying the word of the Lord. But I want you to join me because we, we're going to study the word of the Lord together. And God is going to bless us real good. I'll see you right here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.